today we're going to talk about tool maintenance. I like to know that I'm doing something valuable if I do something. So the, the whole thing with tool maintenance is why I do it. What's the whole reason for cleaning your tools? It's not because the tools look yucky. Nothing to do with that. The first reason is that it gives you a clean cut. If you look after your tools, make sure they're sharp, you get a nice clean cut. This allows the tree to heal better and to grow over better. Your, I'll have pictures for you uh, on the on the website when, when you get that. The reverse side of that is that if you have a bad cut or an unclean cut, what happens is that the tree tends to get a type of cancer, we call it canker, and uh, it starts rotting. So very important first of all that you have a clean cut that's going to heal over well. That's the first reason. The second reason is that it prevents rust and damage happening to your tools. Now you can go around the club and you can ask anyone to pull out some tools for you. Uh, they might be really old and look a bit scrappy, uh, but you'll see the blades and the heads are clean. And the reason for this is we pay a lot of money for these tools. So don't let them rust, don't let them deteriorate, keep them in a good condition. Okay, you don't want them, where's that one? You don't want them looking like that. Eh? You can see now stainless steel looking a bit rusty. I'll talk to you about this one a bit later. Is your right. tool. So that's the second one. Is that your tool? That is my tool. That is a root manipulator. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The third reason is that it prevents spread of disease. When you make a cut and you have a tree that is diseased, you're then spreading that disease to all the rest of your plants. So really important after every cut, it's painful. Okay? After every cut, you've got to now sanitize your tools. But that's the only way to stop it from spreading to the rest. Okay, so those are the three reasons. Then, how do you maintain and clean? Um, the first aspect or the first part of it is that once you've finished, you'll find sap uh, from the tree on your tool. Now, that can be cleaned off mainly with methylated spirits or some sort of solvent. If it's really stubborn and it's not wiping off with a cloth, then you can use uh, very fine emery paper or uh, steel wool. Steel wool works quite well as well. So those are the two ways of cleaning off when it's really heavily sapped. Other than that, once you've finished working with your tools, when you get home, give them a light oiling. Uh, Q20 works quite well. Or I like to use an oil that they use on sewing machines because then it's clean oil. Because you don't... One and all, one, one. Uh, three and one. Three and one. The three and one. Nice? Beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Because it's a nice clean oil. You don't want to use a dirty oil because next time you start cutting your trees, uh, again, your the cut won't heal over because you've put uh, dirty oil on it. All right. So that, that's that's how you keep them nice and clean, uh, and then keep them in a cool or not non damp place. Keep them in a dry place. Uh, this will stop them from rusting. Okay, don't dump them in your moist garage if you've got a leaky garage or something like that. Keep them. I keep mine inside. I don't keep them in the garage at all. All right. So when I put this on the uh, on the website, you'll see that uh, there's different. I've had different authors. I've consulted different authors. Two of them uh, being South African authors. Uh, all say much the same thing. Uh, the one, Clements, uh, from the pruning handbook, he says that when it comes to sharpening, take them to a professional sharpener. Don't try and do it yourself. Okay, that, that's the one view. However, Peter Lopesha, uh, we mentioned his book earlier, uh, he's, it's a really great book, a uh, good South African book. He says that you can sharpen it on an oil stone as long as you keep the same angle. Don't change the angle of what the original tool came in. Um, and give it two rubs on the sharp side and one rub on the blunt side. So you're not you're not going mad and sharpening and rubbing backwards and forwards. Hey? Just <coughs> one light rub, two light rubs, mm -hmm. and then on the reverse side one light rub. Right. We have so professional tool sharpeners. Yeah. We uh, the oil stones are the best. Uh, he recommends an oil stone, but there is the the tool sharpener that gets sold. Uh, I think we've got some in the shop. Where's Anthony? Uh, that those those do work as well. That's just more maintenance sharpening, I think. 
If it really needs good sharpening, I would send it away to, to a professional to do it. All right, so those, those are the, the how to maintain and how to look after it. Um, caring for it. Uh, Rudy Adams says that after use, tools must be cleaned with spirits, uh, which removes the sap and then sterilizes it well. So spirits does sterilize it uh, as well. And he says keep it lubricated. So just in summary, keep the blades clean by wiping them with either methylated spirits or some sort of solvent. Uh, this removes the heavy sap. If it's really stuck, then use uh, very fine emery paper, uh, which is sandpaper, that very fine sandpaper, uh, and or steel wool. And then regularly oil the joints. So these pieces here that move, the movie parts in other words, that's the joints. Make sure you, you regularly oil those and give your blades a, a nice wipe as well. Sanitizing between cuts, there's two ways of doing it. Uh, you can have a very uh, diluted jig solution, which works quite well. Um, but I prefer to use hydrogen peroxide. You can buy it from Clicks, Dischem, any pharmacy. You go and you ask it for it. It comes in little bottles. Uh, they sort of put it under their own brand names. But go for the 10% solution. Don't, there's a 40, there's a 30, and a 40%. Don't go for that. Go for the 10% solution, and then all you need to do is between cuts, uh, you just have a little bottle of it, you dip your tool in, and it will totally sanitize whatever bug or disease is on it. Uh, after every serious cutting session, uh, I don't re keep it. It's cheap, it's about five rand a bottle. So you use a bottle, and that's it, you throw it away. So really cheap, really nice. The thing with it is that it really is a very good cleaner. So here's a tool that was left overnight, and I'll pass it around, and you can see what hydrogen peroxide does to a tool if you leave it overnight. It's not a bonsai tool, it's just a cheapie from the, the craft market or whatever, the flea market. Uh, you can see how uh, the bottom part, this part here, was left in the hydrogen peroxide. So you can see what it does if you forget your tool in there. So don't forget your tool if it's, if it's carbon steel. If it's a stainless steel tool, you can leave it in the hydrogen peroxide. Okay, here's a root manipulator. You can see it's really old. It's from the 18th century, uh, full of gunk and gook. This bottom part has been left for two days in hydrogen peroxide. And just see the difference. See how it cleans as well as sanitizes your tools. So those, those will be available. You can come and have a look at them afterwards.